Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a 3D printed sculpt that we're going to paint for someone. So uh, let's get on with it. So yes, this is a 3D printed sculpt, as I mentioned. Uh, this was actually sent to me by one of my patrons, the spectacularly named uh, Triple Clones. Uh, all of my patrons have really great names, I love that. Uh, now this is um, something that uh, he printed and sent to me. Uh, it was printed, I believe, on um, a Bamboo X1 Carbon, I think they are which is a pretty good printer, and you'll see that as we move on. Uh, the reason I've got it over here on this bench is because it's quite a big thing, and I wanted to get it unpacked and look at it before we actually start painting it. Um, now, I don't normally do commissions, as some of you will no doubt be aware, uh, but in this case, uh, we were talking about these sculpts that he got, and he asked me if I'd be interested in painting one of them for him, and I, he showed me this one. I was like, yes, yeah, absolutely, why not? Uh, so here it is. So... Uh, let me get the bits out of the box, and while I'm doing that, we'll talk about what this thing is and, and what we're going to do with it. Um, so, basically, this uh, print was designed by someone else on Patreon, um, a chap who goes, I think his name's Jeff or something, but he goes by the name Hex, Hex 3D, I think it is. I'll put a link um, wherever. Uh, and he does... Uh, 3D sculpts that you can then print out and paint or whatever. Uh, I believe a lot of them, I had a quick look at his page. Um, now I'm not a patron of his, so I couldn't see exactly what he's doing, but he does say they're not safe for work. <laughs> this one is, I'll be pleased to hear. Um, but this is actually quite a cool little thing and I'll show you why. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a picture of it um, and you'll see why I was so keen to paint this thing. Uh, so yes. As you can see, this is Indiana Jones, you know, raiding a temple and finding Han Solo in carbonite. It's like, how cool is that? <laughs> Such a brilliant idea. Um, so what we've got is the various bits of the temple. That's that's part of Indy there. And as you can see, it's, it comes in pieces. The reason it comes in pieces, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, this is just a bag of all the other bits. Um, so here is... Mr. Solo himself, and again, that is a remarkable bit of, uh, of sculpting that he's done. Um, and it's also a remarkably good print as well. I'm very impressed with this printer. Uh, so yes, very cool. So that goes, you'll see there, there's some pegs there, and that fits on there like that. Um, so that's kind of a bit like metallic grill, like if you remember from... Uh, Was it? Well, I can't remember which uh, which film it was now. Um, I think it was that. Was it Empire Strikes Back? I think. Um, it's been a long time since I've watched those films. But the actual um, temple itself is really, really well made. It's got these kind of Mayan slash Aztec kind of uh, vibe to it. Um, but what it also has, and uh, the reason why Indy here is in pieces... You'll notice, if you look in his arm there, there's a hole there. Now, obviously, there's a hole where his hand goes, but there's a hole in there, and there's a hole in his leg there. And this thing, uh, he actually holds a torch in his hand, and it's been designed for a um, for the torch to be lit with an LED. Now, those of you who follow me on TikTok and Instagram uh, will have seen that I actually got a bit of a head start on this one, and it's because I wanted to uh, use some uh, a particular type of material on the la the light, and that takes sometimes days to dry, to fully cure. So that's why I wanted to get a head start on it. Um, but now we're going to do the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all these bits together. Now this bit here is interesting because this is a little tray. This bit unfortunately didn't print terribly well, but it doesn't really matter because. Um, this goes in the in the side of it. You don't you don't want to actually see it. Um, but this is where you can put a, a battery and a you know all your electronics and everything. So we'll use that. Although we may actually change it up a little bit depending on what electronics we use. Um, so what we'll do is we'll quickly let me get this box out of the way. I don't want to close the box because it has a brand name on it, and I don't want to get 
I'm not quite sure what that bit's for. I don't know if that's just like a spare bit or what, but we'll keep hold of that just in case. Right, let's get rid of that box. Now, let's put this thing together roughly. Um, you'll notice that it has these uh, divots, recesses in it, and those are in the bag here. We have a whole bunch of these little pegs, and what they do is they go in those holes and basically hold it all together. They're quite a loose fit, which I like, because I'm probably going to use Araldite to put this together, but it's mainly just to line it up. We'll, we'll probably use super glue to put it all together. Um, so let's see how this goes together. Uh, right, now, I think that goes like... Uh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just figure this out. Oh, does that go that That might go that way, actually. Right, so this is the main base of the thing. Uh, now. Just talk about yourselves for a minute. Uh, right, that goes there like that. Uh, this goes here, like that. Now this piece goes, I think, here, like that. This bit stands on the back. This bit goes here. Yeah, there we go. So, and then this, drops in here, there's a nice little recess for it, and then that sits on top of there, and you'll see there's a couple of pins there and another hole, and that's for, I can't stand him on it because he hasn't got his legs yet, but Indy stands there, and then this tray, there's a little hole in the side for that tray to slide into once it's all lined up properly, but that goes in like that, you see. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So let me get this all... Uh, glue together and I'll throw some primer on it and then we'll look at how we're going to paint it. Uh, right, so what I'm doing now, I just, I mean, I'm, like I said, I was going to assemble this pretty much off camera, but I just wanted to show you this bit. Um, I'm just running the wire through the body and, uh, and into the base and the wire I'm using, this stuff, is actually, it's this. Um, this is actually a silicone coated wire. I uh, got it from eBay or somewhere, I think. Uh, but it's good because what you can do, as you can see here, is I've, you can twist it together, uh, but it still stays very flexible. And I started from the wrist and went that way. And it actually went through surprisingly easily. Um, the chap who designed this obviously put a lot of thought into the root of the of the tube, if you like, because um, obviously you're, it's part of the print. So he's obviously left uh, a, a, a tube to go for the wire to go through, and it's rooted very very well because I thought it was going to be a nightmare, and it actually went through, as I say, surprisingly easily. So I've I fished it through the body first, and then through the leg. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick his legs on, but because uh, his feet go on these little pegs on the base, I wanted to have it on the base while I glued it on to make sure his legs are exactly in the right spot, because there's nothing worse than if I do that and then find out that it, the, the pin, pins don't line up later on. So um, basically I've got to put this down through the hole in the base, and that feeds through into where that tray is, where the battery and everything will be. Um, and to be fair, you could use something like, a, you know, a, just as, as, as basic as a tea light or something to power it. But I'm going to do something a little bit more um, long term, shall we say, than that. Uh, so what I've got to do is get it all lined up and then glue it in place. So that leg goes like that roughly. And then this leg goes like that. But you see what I need to do is make sure that I oh actually I don't know if you can see that. 
need to make sure I get the legs like rotated into exactly the right spot so that they all like so everything lines up like the seams on his trousers and everything will line up so he won't actually stand unfortunately but that's basically what I'm doing now so I'm going to use some um, some of this uh, five minute owl diet to glue his legs on so let me just get that set up here's a little uh, trick for you actually <laughs> I've got this piece of cardboard here, but it's actually part of, uh, you might recognize, <laughs> it's uh, an Airfix starter kit box. And what I do is when I'm done with them, most of them get recycled. But what I also do is I keep some and I cut them up into little squares and they work very well for things like this. You can use um, super glue. Super glue works very well for 3D prints. But in this case, I'm going to use the uh, Araldite because I think it has better like gap filling properties if you like. Uh, let's mix this up. Right, so let's see if we can get this. This one's going to be the awkward one obviously because it's got the wire on it. It shouldn't be too difficult. Right, so let's pop that onto there. Like that. Get some tape on there. Make sure that that's lined up properly. Now for the fun bit, because I've got to try and put some glue on the other leg without... Oh, let's make sure that wire's pulled all the way through. Get that on the pin. Like that. Oh dear. <laughs> Talk about yourself for a minute. Trying to get the glue off the cardboard with one hand is not easy. Right. That should be enough. Now, I'll pop that in there. Get my finger out of the way. Uh, put that. That is not on the pen. There it goes. As I say, we need to make sure this all lines up properly. So it's a case of twisting the leg round and making sure everything lines up. The easiest thing to go by is the seam in his trousers and try and get rid of the gaps. Try and get any excess glue that squishes out. It needs to be about there. Okay, let's get a bit of tape on there. Hopefully that should do it. Right, we'll let that dry and go on from there. Right, so this is all stuck together now and um, I've put some grey primer on it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to do some shading around the, the various blocks and things with this. Uh, this is Vallejo uh, German Red Brown Surface Primer. And I'm actually going to prime some of the other bits with this as well. But mainly we'll get started with this. Uh, this is going to be quite awkward to film so I'm not going to film all of it but just uh, just to give you an idea. So 
what I'm going to do is <laughs> just try and get in around some of these bricks and things. Oh, this is really awkward. This thing is far too big. Stop laughing at the back. See? So I will do the rest of this off camera because I say it's very tricky to do in front of the camera. But this just to give you an idea. Uh, so I'll do the rest of this and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, uh, there we go. So that's uh, given that a quick lick over. Now I've only done it um, just to provide a bit of pre-shading. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some um, uh, zenithal highlighting. Now if you don't know what that is, it's actually, it sounds really, you know, amazing and complicated. It's actually really simple. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a can of white primer and I'm just going to mist it down from the top. Uh, I'm going to take it outside and do it. So, uh, and it's dark outside, so I can't really film it. But basically, it's just a case of hitting it from the top very lightly. And then that will basically lighten the areas where the, where the light would naturally hit it, if that makes sense. Let me go and put some paint on it and I'll show you and you'll see what I mean. Right, so hopefully you can see what I've done there. It's kind of awkward to get this under the camera. Um, but basically, it's a question of hitting it. <laughs> it doesn't show up greatly on this because the light is actually coming from overhead, which is what we're simulating. Um, but it's basically a case of spraying from the top down uh, with a can of white primer. Um, and it basically hits all, the, all of the upper surfaces and lightens them a little. And that basically gives us some highlighting. It also tones down the shading. That's why I did the shading first. You'll see now it looks a lot less kind of dark than it did before, uh, which is kind of what I was aiming for. So, yes, what we're going to do next is I'm going to give the whole thing a coat of a suitable yellowy colour. Yeah, so for this we're going to use this uh, XF59 Desert Yellow. Um, this is one of the old pots, the big ones. This is this is what Tamiya paints used to come in. Um, now they come in these much smaller ones, and yet they cost the same, which is interesting. But anyway, we'll gloss over that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll use this uh, and just give it a light, a few light coats, just to give it a nice sort of uh, you know sandstony kind of look. Right, so here we are, that's our first coat of paint on. Hopefully you can see that all right. It's, like I say, it's a bit of a beast to get underneath the camera. Um, but what you can see is that has also, you know, toned down the uh, the uh, shading in between the bricks uh, and basically unified everything, obviously as it would. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm gonna add a bit more detail to this. Um, not too much. But I want to add some sort of sand because the trouble is there are a couple of like fairly obvious joins here and there. Not a lot, but a little bit. Um, but I've got an idea to get rid of those. So um, we'll do that next. Right, so I've got myself a little plastic pot here. And I've got some uh, oh, modelling paste. So we'll put a blob of this in there. Oh, if I can get the lid open. Oh, this is gloopy stuff. Oh. Ooh. There we go, blob of that. And I've got some sand here. This is just beach sand. So we'll uh, throw some of this in. I can't remember which beach this came from now, but. A bit of that. And I think what I'm also going to I'm going to mix this up first. Probably want some more sand in this, but we'll see. Might put a drop of water in that, but what I am going to put in is a few drops of this uh, 
desert yellow just to uh, tint it a bit. We're going to paint over it, but it's just to kind of help it on its way. So just a little bit. I'll also thin it down a little bit, make it a bit less gloopy. All right, now we can put this on. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this. I'll just basically blob it on, push it into the corners. And I'll probably use a brush to move this around a bit. So this is just to get it on here initially. But what we want it to look like is like sand kind of drifted into the corners. And it will also help hide some of these more obvious joins. But you can see the paint is just helping to blend it in a little bit. But like I say, we're going to go over it again anyway, so it's not uh, it's not the end of the world, but it just gives it a bit of a, a head start sort of thing. Like that, and then we'll take a brush. This is a fairly nasty old brush, so this will do. And we'll just want to use that to move this around a little bit. Kind of work it into the edges and such. You want to try and sort of get it to look like it's drifted, if you see what I mean, like it's wind blown. Oh, I'm not to hit the camera too much. <laughs> Uh, let me see if I can get you a better shot of this. Let's get the... All right, that's a bit more like it. So, like I say, we'll just move this around a bit and try and get it to look like this has drifted into the corners. So, I'll put some more of this on and then uh, we'll come back and see what it looks like. All right, so there we go. Um, I might put a bit more on actually, I'm not sure yet. But uh, it's basically just sort of blend in all these edges and just, you know, make it look like there's windblown sand in there. We're going to put some more on, some more effects on afterwards. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and then I think um, I'll give it another quick lick over with the, uh, the desert yellow just to make sure it's all fully blended. And I think from there we can start adding some other effects. Um, so I want to put some algae and moss and things on it as well, but I want to put the, I want to make sure I've got all the brown on first because I don't want to paint over the moss. So, yeah, we'll let this dry and see what it looks like, and then uh, go from there. Right. Uh, so uh, progress has happened. Uh, so uh, you saw me put the um, the terrain mix on the terrain paste. Uh, and what I did after that was I then sprinkled some loose sand over everything, pretty much, uh, and kind of banked it up into the corners and things like that. Uh, and then I secured that with some scenery glue, and then I gave the whole thing another spritz of the uh, uh, desert yellow, uh, So, which looks great, but I think it needs a little bit extra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few extra little bits and I've got a few things here I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do yet but uh, I've got some of this uh, this is sisal or sometimes some people call it sisal but I call it sisal uh, it's a plant fiber and uh, what you can do with it is you can use it to well you can use it for all kinds of different things you can make rope out of it if you want to uh, weave it into fabric all sorts but I'm going to use it to make some um, uh, a lot of people use it to make reeds, so I'm going to make, you know, like a grassy kind of thing with that. I've also got some of this. Uh, I've used this before. This is um, this is curly moss. 
Uh, sounds like a <laughs> like an 80s ska band or something. But anyway, um, but it's basically dried moss. So we might put some of that on. And I've also got on the moss front uh, this stuff. Oh, I've got a huge tub of this. So. But this stuff is, um, I think it's called sphagnum moss. Uh, but I bought a big bag of this from a garden center and it comes, it's wet when you get it because it's moss. Um, so what I did was I, over a period of some days, uh, dried it out in the airing cupboard and then put it in a big tub. So I've got a huge tub of that. So, uh, but it's quite cool because it looks kind of, um, looks kind of like vines a bit. So we'll use some of that as well. So I'm going to put this on in various spots. So, for example, we might have a bit here like this, you see. Oh, you can't see that now. <laughs> um, you know, things like this, kind of, kind of just like drape it around. Just to give it a bit more interest, that's all. Make it look a bit less um, uniform. Because it's one of these things that, I mean, yes, admittedly, it's like if you went to a, you know, a, a desert or something and found a ruin, it would look pretty much like this. But to me, it just looks a bit bland and I just want to spice it up a bit. So I'll stick a few bits of this on. I'm just going to use some uh, Mod Podge to stick it on. Um, and uh, we will see what it looks like. Um, just before I do, I'll just show you how this stuff works. Um, the trick with this is to get a, a few strands of it, however much you want. Oh. And what we're going to do is... Just trim that end off a bit. So we've got a nice level end. And then what we'll do is we'll drill a little hole in the sand somewhere and basically plug it in the hole with a bit of Mod Podge. Uh, I will attempt to demonstrate. Gosh, it's probably big enough. Um, let's go for this corner here. So just make a little a little divot and then what we do is put a little bit of uh, whoop, not too much Mod Podge, a little bit of Mod Podge, <laughs> that's probably a bit much but never mind, get rid of a bit of that and then what we do is try and maneuver this into said hole. Stop laughing at the back. Oh. All right, get in there. Just like that, see? And that gives us a nice little bit of uh, grass, like dried grass. Uh, I'll just get a pair of tweezers and poke that down a bit more. There we go. That's all right, isn't it? Oh, get rid of this stringy bit. And obviously you can, you know, trim it or whatever you want if there's bits that are in the wrong place or you you know you don't like the way it looks you just trim bits off so uh, and I say for this moss same thing just a little blob of Mod Podge and just stick it down somewhere suitable like I say we'll put a bit there let me set the other camera up quickly actually all right, you might be able to see that a bit better now. This, the trouble is with this thing, it's, it's such an awkward size and shape. It's trying, trying to do anything with it is not easy. Um, so yes, there's a bit of this bit of moss here. So what we'll do is I'll just get some Mod Podge out on a bit of card, dob some into place. And then we'll take this, drop it in, 
like that, see? Say, there we go. So I'll do a few bits around like that, and uh, then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, uh, while we are waiting for the, um, the base to dry, uh, I've masked up Mr. Solo here. And uh, what we're going to do is, I don't know if you can actually see that very well or not, but there's various rough spots on here, and uh, I'm going to make him look a bit rusty. So what I've got here is something new. Uh, this is the Vallejo um, Rust Stain and Streaking Set. So it contains a whole bunch of paints and a couple of washes. Um, and I've had this for a while now. I bought it a while ago, and this is the first chance I've had to try and use it. Uh, so normally I use the Rust, uh, the Life Color Rust and Dust set. Uh, but I always have trouble thinning that. So yeah, I thought I'd give this one a go. So uh, this is not sponsored or anything. I, I bought this with my own money. So we'll give it a go and see what it's like. Uh, so the two colors I'm going to use... Uh, is the orange brown and the orange rust. Now, they're actually different paints because this is model color and this is model air. This stuff is the normal gloopy stuff and this stuff is, I don't know if you can hear that or not. This is very liquid. This The model air ones are, are kind of pre-mixed for airbrushes. So this one's in the brush now and thinned. This one we shouldn't need to. But let's see how we get on with it. I'll get the other camera set up, hang on. too bad. Uh, let me do the rest of this and then we'll go for the lighter colour and see what that looks like. Right, so that's uh, the uh, the orange brown, that's that one. So now we're going to try this uh, model air. It's not, I've never used model air before but uh, we'll see how it goes. So as far as I'm aware with this one you shouldn't need to actually thin it but we'll see how it goes. I've just put some in the brush just straight out of the bottle, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see what it goes comes out like. Oh, I've also uh, done this part as well, obviously. Right, let's see what this works like. Obviously, we don't want as much of this as we did with the other one. Oh, it doesn't look too bad, does it? That looks alright, doesn't it? Uh, okay, so I'll do the same again. I'll go around all the rest of it and then we'll see what it looks like. Uh, right, this has actually come out rather well. Uh, yeah. So I said, I didn't want to go mad with it because I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, make the thing look, you know, rotten, but I want it to look like it's been stood for a long time. Um, so... What I've also done around the bottom here, because obviously this is where it sits on the ground. So um, there's a little trick you can do. It, it kind of feels counterproductive, but if you kind of blob the paint on, um, it actually gives it some texture uh, and makes it more like rot than rust. So I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if you can actually see it or not, um, but you can see where it's, it's almost like overspray. Like, you, like I've sprayed too much paint on, but that was actually deliberate in that case. I know I quite often do that by accident, but this was actually deliberate. Um, because it actually builds the paint up and gives it a little bit of texture. Uh, but on the top there, I've just done it normal. And this one, again, I've given it a little bit more uh, in certain places, like on the corners um, and at the bottom corners, again, because it's where it's, you know, sitting on the base. So, uh, yeah. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give both of these uh, a couple of coats of uh, gloss first and then we'll put some colour coats on them and then we'll chip them. Right, so, uh, yes, that's all come out quite nicely. So there's the uh, the grill and here, of course, is Mr. Solo. Uh, so you see I've done the corners, uh, the edges and so on. What I'm going to do now, I've actually found it quite tricky to figure out what colour to paint this. <laughs> um, it's I was looking for some screenshots and it's, it's difficult to find any that are actually in, you know, most of them are quite dark. You know, the sets and everything are quite dark. Um, so, but it looks to me like it's kind of a dull silver, like a silvery bronzy kind of colour, but it really depends on the light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an approximation. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, I'm going to do the grill black uh, and then I'm going to do this a kind of a silvery colour. So I'm going to go over both of them first with flat black um, and then after that I'm going to go over uh, Mr Solo with some XF16 flat aluminium and see how that works. So let's see how we get on with that. <laughs> but of course I nearly forgot something there. That would have been very silly. Hairspray. <laughs> Put the hairspray on first, then spray the paint. Um, so this is extra firm hairspray from Sainsbury's. Uh, I did a video a while back on different hairsprays and which ones were good for chipping and stuff like that. And the two that I decided I liked the most um, was this one and also uh, the the Aldi's own brand. The I think it's called Lacura. Uh, their extra firm hairspray is also good and the nice thing about the liqueur is if you get it on sale um, it comes in a bigger tin so it's actually cheaper but this stuff is very good uh, and so is the liqueur also as an aside if you have a 3d printer and you use hairspray to make your print stick um, which fortunately I don't have to do anymore uh, then this is very good for that as well as is the liqueur so it's with whichever one you can get hold of easiest is I suppose the answer but coat of this first then the paint. Right, onwards. <laughs> that actually looks pretty cool from that angle, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I am going to do as well. Uh, while I'm just waiting for that hairspray to dry, I'm going to get my um, my little wax burner out because I think that this paint is going to chip a lot easier with warm water. So I'm going to put that on as well. And uh, that should make life a little bit easier when we come to chip the paint. Right, and as I said, next thing is the um, XF16. Oh yeah, I think that'll work quite nicely. Because the nice thing is it's not it's not bright silver, and also when I hit this with some matte lacquer later on, it'll, it'll dull it right down. So uh, yeah, I think this will work really well. Right, paint chipping. So um, we've got our grill here. I've got some warm water over here. Uh, you can do it with cold. I just find it works a bit better with warm. Uh, I've got a couple of brushes. So this is more, this one here is just really to get it wet and put the water on. This one here, um, this actually started life as a normal paintbrush. I think it actually says on it there, it's a number two. Um, and this was an oil painting brush and they have quite stiff bristles. And what I did was I cut it down very short, as you can see there. And it makes those bristles very, very stiff. So they're good for kind of working away at the paint. But basically use whatever you need to. Um, paint brushes, uh, cotton buds, toothbrush, whatever works. If the paint won't come off easily, then, you know, use a paint, use a, a toothbrush or something to, to have at it. Right, let's start. 
I find the best thing to do is just to get the paint wet to start with. And sometimes you'll find it will come off really easily. Other times it won't. But just start, you know, get, get an area of it wet. And this lets it, gives it a second for the water to soak through. See, it started to come off there already, look. <laughs> and that's what you've got to be careful of. Because once it starts coming off, it comes off really quick. Um, but it just basically soaks through the paint and reactivates the... Um, the hairspray and I did put this hairspray on pretty thick so what I'm going to do is just I'm, you see I'm just dabbing it because these bristles are quite stiff it's um, helping take the paint off like that you see and we'll go down the edges and all over it really Try and keep it somewhere near the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So you see, just like that. And as I say, what you can also do is, you know, use something like here. Um, if you want to make scratches, just, you know, easy as that. Um, but you can, you can dab it with a damp cloth. You can do whatever you want, whatever works. Just, you know, play with it. That's why that's how I practice with this is I just get bits of old models, spray them one color, spray them with um, hairspray and then put another color over the top and just just have a practice to see what it comes out like. So. But you can actually this is coming off really, really easy, <laughs> perhaps a little too easily, but uh, it's all right. So I'll um, I'll carry on with this, get this one done. We'll have a quick look at what this one looks like, and then we'll crack on with uh, Mr. Solo. Right there we go. I oh, think that looks suitably rusty. It's not bad, is it? So we'll let this dry, um, and when I say dry, I mean because it's obviously the paint is now soaked in water, so we need to let the water dry out of the paint. Um, so we'll put this one to one side, and then we'll. Um, have a crack at uh, Mr. Solo here, because I am very keen to see how this works out. So let's pop that over there, out of the way. And we'll see what happens here. Now, obviously with this one, I'm only going to chip the edges here. I'm not going to chip him, because that's supposed to be carbonite. Whatever carbonite is, but still. Um, so we'll just wet around the edges here and like I say we're mainly interested in the face and the corners and whatnot so let's see how well this works all right let's start on this corner down here at the bottom oh yeah that's coming off really easy as well Oh yeah, I like that. And again, it's more where these sort of rough bits are, if you like. I'm not really worried too much about the rest of it. But um, these bits here, this is what I'm really interested in. Like that, you see? Because these look like corroded, rotten, rusty. So that's what we really want to focus on. So, yeah. So as I say, I'll carry on around this like I did with the other one. It shouldn't take too long. And uh, when it's done, we'll uh, we'll see how we get on with it. But yeah, this is working very well so far. I'm very happy with this. All right, we're nearly there. So we're down to the last corner. And you can see there, I was just using a cocktail stick 
to get into some of these smaller details just because sometimes you know the brush can be a bit big so it's whatever it takes to fit in whatever you're trying to get into stop laughing at the back but yeah like I said whatever works whatever um, you know obviously if you're doing bigger areas or you know you, you know you can use a toothbrush or a bigger paintbrush or whatever um, but you end up like I have with a a, an array of different bits and pieces that you use for chipping paint so whatever works but uh, there we go I think that looks not too bad at all actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into this corner a little bit more with this because it's like here you see where there's this little indentation here I want to get in there and Sort of allow that to be the defining feature as it were and it's the same with some of these deeper you know crevices again stop laughing at the back but anyway <laughs> sorry i just started thinking about <laughs> general melch it then oh there's another little bit there actually that could probably do with some this is what always helps to go back round and just have a look at things and see, you know, what's in case you've missed anything. So there we go. And I've done the, the top as well, the corners at the top there. And then down this side. And again, you can see here, like on these bits, I've done these primarily with the... Um, with the cocktail stick and just kind of outlined the bits more than anything and again with this sort of deep cut here where it's really corroded i've not really gone around the outside of it too much because i want to highlight that damage so but uh yeah i'll just take a little bit more off the bottom here All right, I think that will do us. So what we'll do now is we'll let these both dry. Uh, then I'm going to give them both uh, another layer of uh, gloss varnish. And then we'll do some more weathering after that. Right, so this is at a chance to dry now. Um, I just gave it a quick flick over with this um, high coat double acrylic uh, gloss lacquer, basically. Um, so what I want to do now is just uh, add a bit more weathering to it. And to do that, I'm going to use this. You've seen me do this before, but uh, these are the Crawford and Black Cheapo oil paints. And uh, I'm going to use a couple of these to add a bit more rustiness to it. So we'll use a couple of different colours. So Burnt Sienna and also Orange. Now, one of the nice things about this uh, particular oil paints is <laughs> they're actually pretty useless as oil paints. They don't have a lot of oil in them, funnily enough, but they do have a lot of pigment, which means they're great for this sort of thing. Um, but it's still a good idea with oil paints to uh, basically put them, squeeze them out onto a bit of cardboard like this. I need a little bit. That should be more than enough. And uh, what it does is the oil, you'll see there's a little bit of oil there, it basically just soaks into the cardboard so which is good if you're using like more expensive oil paints because uh they um they tend to have a lot more oil in them so but you see there that orange is a bit more oily but uh this just helps sort of soak some of the oil out of it and we'll just use a nice cheap nasty brush like This one, one of my spectacular Chinese brushes. Um, I bought these, I think they I came from Wish, and I think I got 10 of them for a pound. <laughs> um, which reminds me, actually, I did ask this before, but nobody answered. If anybody 
can read Chinese, I'm assuming it's Chinese, um, and knows what that actually says, I'd be kind of interested to know. So, yeah, leave a comment. Anyway, um, so what we're going to do, I'll just give you a rough idea and then I'll do the rest of it off camera. But uh, the trick here is we'll just get a little bit of this one to start with and just add a few little little blobs here and there. Like that. And then this is a, a makeup brush. It's, uh, it actually says on it, eyeshadow blender and applicator. This came from the pound shop. Um, but basically just use that to streak the paint. But one of the things I found actually works really well is if you actually, it seems counterintuitive, but if you actually go up, it kind of drags the paint up into the recesses. So you can get like, go like up and down, but you know, don't be afraid to brush it upwards as well. And the nice thing about doing this over the top of the, um, the clear coat is if you don't like the way it turns out, you can just take a bit of rag or a, you know, a bit of tissue and just wipe it off. So, but yeah, so we just use, you know, both colors, you know, blend of the two or whatever, um, to just to get the effect that you want. So you can go like over the top if you want to make it look like, you know, bright rust or just use just the brown or just the orange or combinations of the two whatever you want to do really there you go like that so I will go around and do the rest of this, and uh, then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, so there we go. Focus. focus oh. it wants to focus on everything but. So that's the uh, the base there. That's looking rather good. Quite pleased with that. And of course, Mr. Solo himself. So, yeah. And I also added a bit, you can't really see the back of this when it's on the thing, but I added a bit at the top anyway, just to, you know, liven it up a bit. But there you go. So what we'll do now is we'll hit this with a hairdryer and dry it off. And then I'm going to give it a coat of uh, matte lacquer to seal all of this. And uh, then, well, a few other little bits and pieces. And uh, I think we'll be ready to put these onto the diorama and kind of blend it all together. Right, now that varnish is dry, I'm going to uh, stick this bit on. So I'm just going to put a few blobs of uh, this super glue gel. Just to, because uh, this has got better gap filling than like thin stuff. These are quite handy, these little tubes. You can get them from the pound shop. Um, and they there's not a huge amount in there, but for stuff like this, they're perfect. Right, so let's drop this in here. Give it a little squish down. Like that. And now, what I want to do is... Um, I want to blend this base into, or well, this this into the into the actual base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of our sand back in, 
and I'll get a little and just pull that around the edge there and make it look like the sand has you know kind of drifted up around the edge of it over time. Be careful here because that's where his foot goes. We can clear that out in a minute. Uh, let's just use this. Spread it around the back a little bit. You can't really see around the back there, so it's not as important, but I still want to try and get some in there. Besides, it probably drift more into that corner than anywhere else, so. I think that'll do. Clear this away from his foot. We can stick it all down. I think that'll do us. We'll let that dry and then we can um, paint over that and blend it in a bit. Right, back in a bit. So, um, as you saw, I've just painted that sand uh, to blend in with the rest, and it looks pretty good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some of this um, uh, MIG pigments. This is uh, Gold Four sand, uh, and I'm just going to basically dust it around here a little bit and on the top just to kind of dust it up a bit. I don't need too much, but just to... Just to kind of blend this in all a little bit better, just to make it look a bit more dusty, really. <laughs> so we'll just go over the whole thing with this. Get some around the, the sand as well, just to... So I say, just to blend it all properly together. Make it look like it's been here for a while, you know. All right. 
Now I'm going to take a slightly bigger brush and just make sure that's because sometimes this uh, stuff tends to clump up a little bit and you get these little kind of almost like balls of it. Stop laughing at the back. Um, so it's just a case of making sure they're all broken up. So that we get a dust effect rather than, you know, clumps of the stuff. Right. I think that'll do us. Uh, now, we've come to a bit of an impasse here. Uh, because... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up here um, because I want to paint the uh, the Indiana Jones figure next uh, and I'm going to do that as, a, as a, like a part two to this. Um, now there is a question here so I'll be interested to see what you guys think. Um, obviously we've got to do the electronics as well so I was going to do the painting and the electronics together but would you prefer it if I'd spun the electrics or electronics off into a separate video? It's going to be fairly basic, but um, if like the electronics are the only bit you're interested in, then I can do that as a separate video or I can just do them all together. So let me know in the comments what you think and uh, we'll see what we can come up with. But I think for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this um, a coat of matte lacquer just to seal everything. And then I think we can wrap this one up. And here is our so far finished article. Um, this has come out really well, actually. I'm, I'm, uh, it's a lovely print. Uh, the, the guy who made it's done a fantastic job, and it's printed really well. And I'm, I'm very happy with the, uh, the results so far. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in the next video, we'll look at painting Mr. Jones himself, and uh, we may well do the electronics in that video, or we might do them as a separate video. That's pretty much up to you guys. So, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, but yes, this will do for this one for now. I think it's uh, it's certainly a good start, and I, I think this is going to look great when it's finished. So yes, uh, thank you very much to uh, my top tier patrons as ever, um, Amy and the Anonymous Tosh for their continued support, and of course all of my patrons, channel members, and all you lovely people at home. Um, it really does uh, become somewhat humbling the amount of support I get on here. So uh, yes, it is much appreciated. And uh, so yes, hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, beginning of this little project and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.